Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the Terminator series with Terminator Salvation. Now, Salvation is the fourth film in the Terminator franchise. Now, this came out in 2009, and the film is directed by Mick G, who also directed the Charlie's Angels movies. Now, the guys who are credited for writing the screenplay for this movie are the same guys who also wrote Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines, and I was looking Looking at a list of all the movies that they wrote, and it seems like their movies are very hit or miss. Like, the most acclaimed thing that they wrote was the David Fincher movie, The Game, but they also wrote Watchers 2, and they wrote the 1992 horror film Mind Warp, and they also wrote Catwoman. Now, Jonathan Noland, who is Christopher Nolan's brother and co-wrote a lot of Christopher Nolan's movies, he actually did an uncredited rewrite for the script for this movie. Now, the plot of the movie is it's set years and years after the events of Terminator 3. Now, at the end of Terminator 3, Judgment Day actually happened. Like, Skynet started a nuclear war which pretty much ended human civilization as we knew it, and ever since then, humans have been at war with Skynet. And in this movie, John Connor, he's not necessarily the leader of the Resistance yet. Like, a lot of people do look up to him, but a lot of people also kind of view him as kind of like a false prophet. But in the movie, John Connor finds out that Skynet pretty much has has a hit list, and number one on this hit list is actually Kyle Reese, who, if you saw the first movie, you would realize is actually John Connor's father. So you realize that if Skynet succeeds at killing Kyle Reese, it will pretty much erase John Connor from existence. Now, in the movie, you're introduced to a character named Marcus Wright, who, before Judgment Day happened, was a man on death row, but he signed his body over to science, and after he was executed, it turns out that they turned his body into a cyborg, pretty much, and now Skynet has resurrected him as a half-human, half-cyborg. So, in the movie, Marcus Wright meets Kyle Reese and sees Kyle Reese get taken by the machines, and eventually he also meets John Connor, and basically he's the one who has to lead John Connor into this uh, camp where they're keeping all these human prisoners, and he's the one who tr really tries to help John Connor save Kyle Reese even though John Connor really doesn't trust him very much because he is, of course, part cyborg. So yeah, that's the basic plotline of Terminator Salvation. John Connor is trying to save Kyle Reese, and this character, Marcus Wright, is helping John Connor, but he's also trying to regain his humanity after he pretty much had it taken away from him. Now, I have very mixed feelings on Terminator Salvation. Like, I would say, overall, I do like the movie, but the movie has a lot of problems, and the movie certainly is not what it could have been, because this movie, it's showing you the aftermath of Judgment Day, something that's been talked about in all the Terminator movies leading up to this, and it really could have been so much better. Like, this is one of those movies that when I'm watching it, I can enjoy it, and I can look past a lot of the plot holes and cliches that are in the movie, but then when I stop to think about the movie, I'm like, you know what? That was really fucking stupid. Like, Skynet is supposedly really good at tracking people, yet in the movie, the Resistance has, like, these big-ass military bases, and it's like, 
how is Skynet not able to track these people? Now, one scene in this movie that really did kind of take me out of the movie, even when I first saw the movie back in 2009 when it came out, and keep in mind, when I first saw this movie, I did like it a lot, but even back then when I saw it, the scene still took me out of the movie. Now, this is the only Terminator movie that does not have Arnold Schwarzenegger in it, and and I think the main reason for that is because at the time this movie came out, I believe he was still the governor of California at the time. But there's this one scene in the movie where you see a T-800 and it looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but it's a CGI Arnold Schwarzenegger, and you could tell it's CGI, and it really did kind of just take me out of the movie. So, the movie has a lot of problems, it has a lot of plot holes, and a lot of things in the movie which are really just kind of stupid, like the CGI Arnold Schwarzenegger that appears in the movie for no reason whatsoever. But, despite this movie's problems, I don't think it's a terrible movie. I do think it's a pretty well-made movie, with the exception of the CGI Arnold Schwarzenegger. Besides that, though, I do think it's a pretty well-made movie, and I do think it's a pretty well-acted movie as well. Now, in the movie, Christian Bale plays John Connor, and I hate to say this because I do think Christian Bale is a good actor, but he honestly, for me, was kind of the weakest performance in this movie. Like, he did an alright job as John Connor, but I don't know, I just wasn't really feeling him as John Connor in this movie. I felt like he had too much of the Batman voice in this movie, and this was right after he did The Dark Knight, so I felt like he still kind of had that kind of voice to him, and I don't know, it just didn't work for me. Now, this is the movie that Christian Bale famously freaked out on the set of. Like, uh, apparently, like, the cinematographer for the movie, like, walked into frame or something. I don't know the full details of the story, but I know that Christian Bale went on that huge rant during the uh, filming of this movie. Now, in the movie, Sam Worthington plays the character of Marcus Wright, and I think he does a pretty decent job as the character in this movie, and I do think the character of Marcus Wright is a really interesting character. Now, perhaps my favorite performance in this movie is Anton Yelchin as Kyle Reese. I hope I'm saying that actor's name right, and I actually do really like him as an actor, and I thought he did a really good job in this movie as Kyle Reese. Like, I actually really did buy him as a younger version of the character that we saw in the first movie. Now, in this movie, Michael Ironside has a small role, and I really do think the movie could have used more of him. Then again, I've only seen the PG-13 cut of this movie. I know there's an R-rated cut of this movie, so maybe in the R-rated cut there's more scenes with Michael Ironside's character in it, but in the cut that I've seen, he's only in very few scenes in the movie, and I do think the movie could have used more of him. Him. Now, in the movie, the character of Catherine Brewster, who was in Terminator 3, she comes back in this movie. However, in this movie, she's played by a different actress. Now, around the same time that this movie came out, there was also a Terminator TV series called The Sarah Connor Chronicles. Now, I've only seen bits and pieces of the TV series. I remember when it was on, my dad used to watch it a lot. Now, now, from what I know of the TV series, I believe it takes place after the events of Terminator 2, but it ignores the continuity of Terminator 3 and this movie. But 
The thing with the Terminator series, though, is since it's a series that deals with the concept of time travel, you can kind of get away with having different Terminator continuities because with time travel, you could create like alternate universes and stuff like that. So, in a weird way, even though the TV series ignores the continuity of 3 and 4, it still could connect to 3 and four in a way because pretty much when you're dealing with time travel I think all bets are off pretty much when it comes to continuity. So yeah that's my review on Terminator Salvation. It's not a great movie but it is watchable, it is entertaining but it definitely could have been a lot better. But yeah that's my review on Terminator Salvation and my next review will be on Terminator Genesis. So stay tuned for that review, and bye.